ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله واحسن الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار اما بعد first of all i want to ask the brothers to please come forward there's people that are still coming and i was asked to ask you know everybody to come forward رحم الله خير ما بعد ذا سيستيرز لاست تايم ذيس مسجد وانا كنت خطبة وي سبوك اباوت ذا بيلا اوف اسلام ذا موست امبورتنت بارت اوف ات ذا شهادة اند وي سبوك اباوت ذا فيرست بارت اشهد ان لا اله الا الله اند وي منشن ذا فيرتشز اوف لا اله الا الله the conditions of la ilaha illallah we also spoke about the opposite of la ilaha illallah the opposite of tawhid with this shirk one thing that i want to add on in this is the gravity of this the gravity of associating partners to allah tabarak wa ta'ala allah tabarak wa ta'ala he said in his book in allah la yaghfiru an yushraka bi wa yaghfiru ma duna dhalika liman yasha Allah tabarak wa ta'ala does not forgive anyone who associates any partners with him. And as you know, the scholars they divided shirk into two, major and minor shirk. But they also said that Allah azza wa does not forgive any of those. Whether it be major or minor shirk, Allah does not forgive it. And both of these are worse than major sins. So whether you are worshiping the grave, whether you're calling on other than Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, whether you're swearing by other than Allah, which is minor shirk, and as for worshiping people that are in the grave, or stalking for other than Allah, those are major shirk, major acts of shirk. But both of them Allah Azza wa does not forgive it. Of course, one of them makes you go out of Islam straight away, and the other one doesn't. But that doesn't mean now a person who swears by other than Allah Azza wa and he dies. Yawm al Qiyamah, Allah is not going to forgive him for that. He's getting punished for sure. That's a fact. So do not get mixed up. Major and minor shirk, Allah never forgives it. Major shirk takes you out of Islam, and minor shirk does not take you out of Islam. So Yawm al Qiyamah, if a person came and he was worshipping other than Allah, making dua to other than Allah, he's going to the Nar of Jahannam. For sure. As for a person who says, I swear by my mother, I swear by my grandfather who's in the grave, that's my nation. And the Yom Qiyama, Allah is going to punish him for that. Remember, this shows you again, as I mentioned earlier, the gravity of shirk. We said that this statement of Tawheed, La ilaha illallah, is a statement of taqwa and ikhlas. Today, inshallah, I want to touch on the second part of this statement, of this shahada. Ashhadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah. If you were to ask Ya Abdullah, you believe that Muhammad is a mention of Allah, or you say that you believe so. If a non-Muslim was to ask you, Fulat, Abdullah, or Muhammad, you claim that Muhammad is a messenger, what do you mean by this? What does that imply? What would you say? Do you know what Muhammad Rasulullah means? You can chant all you want. I love the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I believe he's a prophet, Allah sent him, and so on and so forth. But what does he mean? Ashhadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah. What does he mean? This is 
is what we're going to talk about, inshallah, as we this khutbah. And I want every and all of you to pay attention to this. Because again, your Islam is dependent on it. And if you don't know what it means, then what kind of Muslim are you? If you don't know what it implies, what kind of Muslim are you? What are you going to tell Allah as the when he asks you the question about this Allah? What are you going to say? In the grave, we're going to ask questions. So Muhammad Rasulullah, when you claim that you testify that Muhammad is the person of Allah, it's four things that is incumbent on you to apply, to believe in, to practice. As we said that, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah has conditions. Ashhadu an Muhammad Rasulullah also has conditions. And if you don't fulfill those conditions, then your belief and your claim that you believe that, that you believe that Allah sent the messenger is not true. It's false. The first condition of Muhammad Rasulullah is ta'atuhu fi ma ama. The second, tasdiquhu fi ma akhba. The third one, ijtinabu ma naha anhu wa zajab. And the fourth and last one, wa alla ta'abud Allah illa bima shara'a. When we say that we believe really that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is a mission of Allah, we mean four things. We mean obeying him in everything that he ordered us to do. We mean testifying that everything that he informed us of is true. We mean that everything that he told us not to do, he forbade us from doing, we stay away from it. And the fourth thing, we only worship Allah Taala the way he did it. Now you can look at yourself. Which one of these do you fulfill or you don't fulfill? And the degree, the level of you applying and implementing these four conditions, you know your level of believing that the Prophet is a messenger. If you apply these four things 100%, then yes, fadda, you can claim this. But if you are falling short in one of these, then know that your belief in the Prophet is deficient. So the first thing, ta'atuhu fi ma'ama. Obey the Prophet in everything that he ordered you to do. This is not something that is just for Prophet but all the messengers of Allah, all the messengers of Allah and the prophets, this was the case for them. Allah wa ta'ala, he mentioned in the Quran, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَا مِنْ رَسُولٍ إِلَّا لِيُطَعَ بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ And we did, not, we did not send any messenger except that he should be obeyed and followed by the will of Allah wa ta'ala. So following the messengers of, and the prophets is from believing Allah Azza wa Jal. And remember, Bani Israel, one thing that caused them to be cursed. As Allah Taala is said in the Quran concerning them, "Lu'ina al-ladina kafaru min bani Israel ala nisan Dawood wa Isa ibn Maryam." ذلك بما عصوا وكانوا يعتدون. One of the reasons that Bani Israel, the children of Israel, were cursed by Allah Taala was because they used to differ with their prophets. They didn't used to obey them. And you know the story of the calf. Slaughter a calf, they start asking questions. What color is it meant to be? How is it meant to be? And Allah made it difficult on them. The Prophet Allah said in the Hadith that Bani Israel was cursed for two things. One thing is because they used to differ with their prophets. Ikhtilaf, every time. The second thing is because they used to kill their prophets as well. Not just differing, but killing the prophets as well and the messengers. So we have to ask ourselves, and we have to realize that you differing and you not obeying the Prophet in everything that he told you to do could be a cause of you being cursed. And being cursed by Allah Taala means that you're taken away from His mercy. And all of us want Allah to have mercy on us, right? We finish Ramadan. We ask Allah Azza wa to have mercy on us. Allahumma inna ka'afun tuhaybu lafa fa'af anna, and so on and so forth. Remember, again, that you disobeying the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam could be a cause of curse. And you being cursed by Allah Azza wa Jalla means that you're taken away from His mercy. And Yom Al-Qiyamah, you're not going to have mercy for you. He's not going to have mercy on you. From the verses that establish this obedience to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is what Allah Azza wa Jalla said in Surah Al-Hashr. وَمَا أَتَاكُمْ الرَّسُولُ فَخُضُوهُ وَمَا نَهَاكُمْ عَنْهُ فَانْتَهُ that which the Prophet the Messenger gives you, that which he orders you to do, then do it. It's not no relax. You have the choice. 
He says, do it. Take it. And that which he forbids you to do, stay away from it. It's not maybe, or my sheikh said, or I think, or my scholars, la. Fantahu, stop it, don't do it. Don't be from those who are going to say, for example, concerning smoking. They say, oh, this person is a smoker, he smokes sicha or yani, hookah or whatever. Or he takes drugs, for example. And they say, no, you have to be gradual when you want to, it's forbidden for, for, for him. No. If he's doing five times a day, then sometimes take four times, and then three times, and then one time, and then he's going to stop it gradually. It's not gradually when it's haram. There's not gradually when it's haram. Something is haram, is haram, you have to stop it, malish. It's not about taking step by step, actually. Don't be too harsh on him. La! We don't do that for things that are haram, and we don't do that for things that are obligatory. If a person doesn't pray, we say, no, he's going to pray Friday, and then he prays three times a day, and then three times a day, and then eventually he's going to pray five times. La, la, he. You pray five times a day, or you don't pray. From the ayat that established this point of obeying the Prophet is the worst, the worst, the worst of Allah, so he says, وَمَا كَانَ لِمُؤْمِنِ وَلَا مُؤْمِنَةِ إِذَا قَضَى اللَّهُ وَرَسُولَهُ أَمْرًا أَنْ يَكُونَ لَهُمْ مُخِيَةُ مِنْ عَمْرِهِمْ وَيُسَلِّمُ تَسْلِيمًا أو ما كان المؤمن ولا مؤمنة إذا خل الله ورسوله أمرا أن يكون لهم نخية من أمره ومن يعصي الله ورسوله فقد ضل ضلالا مبينا. It is not befitting for a person who believes in Allah. Are you a believer? Listen to this, pay attention. It's not befitting for a person who claims Iman or a woman who claims Iman when Allah and His Messenger decide a matter that they start doubting, they start having a choice. They want some sort of yani, leeway. And whoever goes against Allah, whoever disobeys Allah and his messenger, then he is indeed astray. Clear. Clearly, he's clearly astray. So you have to judge yourself now. Are you obeying the Prophet or are you disobeying him? Are you doing what he tells you to do or are you doing otherwise? From the ayat that I mentioned and established this point is the verse Whoever follows the Prophet then he has indeed follows Allah. There's many many ayat and hadith I mentioned this. One of the most important ones. And the scholars they said that this is ayat al This is to test you. How truthful are you in your belief in your belief that the Prophet is the messenger? Allah Azza wa Jal says in the Quran, Qul in kuntum tuhibbun Allah fattabi'uni yuhibbikum Allah wa yakhir lakum dhunubakum. So imagine, listen to this. You following the Prophet is a cause that Allah Azza wa Jal is going to love you. If you claim that you love Allah, then follow the Prophet Yuhibbikum Allah, that's the first benefit. Allah is going to love you. And it's going to forgive your sins. So if you want your sins to be forgiven, follow the Prophet Allah If you want Allah to love you, follow the Prophet Allah And as you know, it's not يعني, that you love the person, or you love whoever you love. It's about the person loving you. You can love Allah if you want. But if Allah does not love you, then what is the point of your love for Him? And your love for Him goes through you following the message that He sent you. From the ahadith, there are many that talks about following the Prophet obeying his orders. It's the hadith where the Prophet says, Ma amaratukum bihi fa'atu bihi mastata'atum wa ma nahaytukum anhu fertanibu. That which I told you to do, that which I ordered you to do, then do what you can. Do your best. Do your maximum. Don't just cry. Do your maximum. Your 100%. Just as you're writing your GCSEs or your, or your exam or your dissertation, do your best to have the best mark. And that which I forbid you to do, stay away from it. Again, not try to. Look at this. For what you have to do, try to do it for your 100%. As for what you need to, you need to leave off, then there's no leeway. 
There's no leniency. Just leave it. But if any of you doing something that he's not supposed to be doing, then leave it straight away. From the hadith that the Prophet mentioned concerning following him, he's also in ibadat. He says, Alayhi salatu wa salam, Sallu kama ra'aytuhu ni usalli. Pray as you saw me pray. He says concerning Hajj, خُذُوا عَنِّي مَنَاسِكَكُمْ Take from me your right of Hajj. You Hajj the way I did it. Ya Abdullah, from the implications of La ilaha of Muhammad Rasulullah, is that what some of the scholars mention as a definition. They said that Ashhadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah means La, that there's no one worthy to be worshipped or there's no one worthy to be obeyed and followed yani unconditionally. With no boundaries except the first Allah or Sallam. La Madhur bi haqqin illa Rasulullah. No one has the right to be obeyed a hundred percent without double thinking except the first Allah or Sallam. And as you know, the incident of Allah Malik Ahmad had a famous statement. He said to his companion or to the people around him, Kullu yu'akhadu bin qawlihi wa yurad illa sahib hal al-kabar. Wa ashara illa qabir nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That we can take from anyone and we can reject from anyone. If the truth is with you, we're going to accept it. As for falsehood, we're going to reject it. And that's for everyone. The companions, the tabi'in, the scholars, your sheikh, your father, your mother, my father, my mother, anyone we can accept from him, we can reject from him, he can be right or wrong, except the first Allah or Sallam. So when the Sunnah comes to you, when evidence comes to you, and you reject it because of whatever yeah, any excuse you bring, that's up to you. That's on you. The opposite of following the first Allah Sallam is going against his words. And from the worst types of you, disobeying Prophet Allah or Sallam is bid'ah. And we mentioned that one of the conditions of Ashhadu Allah Muhammad Rasulullah is you worshiping Allah wa Taala the way He did it. And you not worshiping Allah the way He did it means that you're following something that He didn't do, which is innovations. أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولك لسائر المسلمين فاستغفروه إنهم مرفقون رحيم. والشكر له وعلى توفيقه وامتنانه وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له تعظيما لشانه وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله وأن داعي إلى رضوانه أما بعد. As we were saying, one of the conditions of أشهد أن محمدا رسول الله is for you to worship Allah, to worship your Lord, to worship the one that created you, that sustains you. That gives you life and death the way the Prophet did only. And there are many, many hadith that talk about the harm and the evil of introducing and worshiping Allah Azza wa Jal other than the way the Prophet did it. The opposite of the Sunnah is the Bid'ah. This is this innovation. Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, she mentions and she narrates the hadith where she said that the Prophet sallallahu said Man ahdatha fi amrina hadha ma laysa minhu fa huwa rad Whoever introduces, whoever invents in this affair of ours, i.e. Islam That which is not from it is going to be rejected It's not going to be taken from it In another narration, in another version of the same hadith من عمل عملا ليس عليه أمرنا فهو رد. Whoever does an action, who is going accordance to what we said, to what the Prophet said, is going to be rejected from him. So you have to look at what we do in our deen. You could have been a person who was brought up on innovation. Maybe your father didn't know. Maybe your uncle didn't know. Maybe your family don't doesn't know. This is all they know. They know innovation. That's the only thing they know. So when that delete comes to you, when they said to you that Allah Azza wa Jal says this, and Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said this, and this is bid'ah, and so on and so forth, why do you reject it? You think that Yom Qiyamah, your clan, 
or your delay or your shame is going to come as a proof for you? No way. So we have to be careful. From the hadith that mentioned the danger of big and look at this, the Prophet mentioned innovation before he even appeared. And we say that every day in Khutbah al Hajj. The worst matters that a person can do is innovation. The worst matters that a person can do in Islam is bringing something new. Musa said that you should say it in Khutbah to Hajj, but he used to say it as I said to you. Before even innovation was there, you think there was any innovation at that time, but there wasn't. Abu Bakr and Umar, they didn't know any of that. Musa said was there. They would see him worship, they would see him make dua, they would see him call upon Allah and so on and so forth. There was no bid'ah that the Prophet mentioned bid'ah. And you have people today who claim there's no bid'ah. Everybody can do what they want. You can worship Allah the way you want. You can dance. You can sing. You can do whatever you want and just worship Allah. No. From the hadith that establish the harm of innovation is the hadith of Al-Irbaan ibn Sari radiallahu ta'ala anhu. He said, وَعَلَى النَّبِيُّ صَلَى اللَّهُ وَسَلَّمْ مُعِرَةً ظَرَفَ مِنْهَا الْعُيُونَ وَجَهَتْ مِنْهَا الْقُلُوبِ فَقُلْنَا يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ كَأَنَّهَا مُعِرَةٌ مُوَدِّعِ فَأَوْسِنَا He said, and Prophet Allah Sallam admonished us, he gave us a speech which caused our eyes to shed tears and our hearts to tremble and we said to him, Ya Rasulullah, it is as if this is a sermon of departure. He said, you say invite us, our sina, give us an advice. From the advice of the Prophet he said to them, فَإِنَّهُ مَنْ يَعْشِ مِنْكُمْ فَسَيَرَ اخْتِلَافًا كَثِيرًا فَعَلَيْكُمْ لِسُنَّةِ وَسُنَّةِ الْخُلَفَاءِ الرَّاشِدِينَ عَبْضُوا عَلَيْهَا بِالنَّوَاجِسِ تَمَسَّكُوا بِهَا فَإِنَّ كُلَّ مُحْدَثَةٍ بِدْعَةٍ أو وَعَلَيْكُمْ لِسُنَّةِ فَإِنَّ كُلَّ مُحْدَثَةٍ بِدْعَةٍ أو كُلَّ بِدْعَةٍ ضَلَالَةٍ أو كَمَا قَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ He said that a time is going to come that there's going to be fitan. There's going to be ikhtilaf. There's going to be a lot of difference between the Muslims. فَعَلَيْكُمْ لِسُنَّةِ أَوْكُلَ بِدْعَةٍ ضَلَالَةٍ is to do what I do. تَمَسَّكُوا بِهَا Hold on to it. وَعَبْضُوا عَلَيْهَا بِالنَّوَاجِ Hold on to it with your more teeth. وَإِيَّاكُمْ وَمُحْدَثَاتِ الْأُمُورِ And be warned, be aware of new invented matters in Islam. Because every new invented matter is an innovation. And every innovation is, cause, is causing you to the fire. I want to have to mention the details of that. We, we, we mentioned that here many, many, many times. So yeah, Allah, remember that these two statements, أَشْهَدُ أَلَّا إِلَا إِلَا اللَّهُ وَأَشْهَدُ أَنَّ مُحَمَّدَ رَسُولُ اللَّهُ they are the pillars of Islam, the strongest pillars of Islam, and all of the other pillars rely on this one. Remember that the first pillar, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, is about sincerity, ikhlas to Allah wa ta'ala, worshiping Him alone without any partners. And Ashhadu an Muhammad Rasulullah is about you following the Prophet Allah wa sallam. A very important point that I, and I have to mention, and I think it's a condition that I didn't really speak about. From the condition of Zalai of, 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 of Ashad al Muhammad Rasulullah is that you have to believe in everything that the Prophet informed you of. Whether it be about the angels, the fire, Jahannam, the jinn, and so on and so forth. And listen to this. The incident of Al Isra al Miha al Miraj, which is when the Prophet traveled from Mecca to Bayt al Maqdis, and then from Bayt al Maqdis all the way to the heavens. The next morning, the Quraysh came to Abu Bakr as Siddiq. Again, Tasdiq for who? As Siddiq. Where do you think he took this name from? When Quraysh came to Abu Bakr as Siddiq, the next morning they said, Abu Bakr, do you understand? Do you listen to what your Sahib is saying? Listen to what Muhammad is saying. He is saying that he left Mecca all the way to Baytul Maqdis, and then from Baytul Maqdis all the way to Allah Azza wa Jal. In one night, In one night, Abu Bakr didn't say, and this is deep. He didn't start shaking. He said one question. He asked him one question. 
Did he say that? Is that what Muhammad said? Are you sure he said it? He didn't go and check the Prophet. He didn't say, no, let, give, give me a second, let me go and ask him. The only thing he said was, did Muhammad say that? He said, yes. He said, I believe in it. If Muhammad said that, I believe in it. Khabas. Our brother would be shocked at what the people, the Muslims in 2023 are doing. When he said that Allah is one, when he said to them that it's Jahannam and it's now, and it's this about Aida, point after point, they start doubting. Say, no, this is some medieval understanding. We have to renew this now. This is something new. This is not befitting to our era. It's not befitting to the 21st century. Abu Bakr will be shot. So remember, Ya Abdullah, everything of Prophet came with in terms of belief, you have to believe in it. What I shak. You don't you don't allow it. You're not allowed to have any doubt about it. And if you're starting to have doubts, Wallahi, it's better for you to go to a person of knowledge so he can explain it to you. You have to doubt your own intent. And this is what he manages. From the first verse of Surah Al-Baqarah, They believe in the unseen. This is what Islam is about. Whether you like it or not, whether you agree or you don't agree, it's about the hayy. Most of the stuff that are about our belief is about what? Things that we haven't seen, we haven't heard, we were just told. So this second statement, Ashadan Muhammad Rasulullah, these are from the explanation and from some of the implications of his peers. And as I mentioned, remember that your Islam is depending on these two things. Testifying that none has the right to worship except Allah Azza wa Jalla, and testifying that none has the right to be followed. And none is, and that Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is his messenger. I'm going to end with this statement of al fudayl ibn Iyad. al fudayl ibn, ibn Iyad, rahimahullah ta'ala, he said concerning the ayah, لِيَبْلُوَكُمْ أَيِّكُمْ أَحْسَنْ عَمَلًا He said that this means that Allah is going to test us concerning our actions, our actions and to see which one has the best of deeds, the best of deeds. And he said that the best of these is two things. The deed that is sincere and the deed that is the most correct. And they said to him, Ya Abu Ali, what does he mean? The deed that is the most sincere and the one that is the most correct. He said, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, if the deed is sincere, you have sincerity, ikhlas, as we claim, but it is not correct, Allah is not going to accept it for you. And if the deed is not sincere, you don't have a class, but it's correct, you do the sunnah, it's not going to be accepted from you. So if you have sincerity, you do something from Allah, for Allah, then you're not doing it according to Prophet Allah, that deed is rejected. And if you don't have a class, but you can be the most sunnah that you want, you can do the sunnah that you want, it's not going to be accepted from you. So the two pillars of your worship, the reason why you were created by Allah is only two things. When you're doing it, do this all the time and check your niyyah. And also check if you're doing it in accordance with Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Because if you're lacking one of these two, one of these two then يعني, you're in trouble, you're in qiyam. The first one is that you're doing it for Allah as only. And the second one is that you're doing it in accordance with Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Sunnah. إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حمود مجيد اللهم أرنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه وأرنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه وأقم الصلاة يا الله